taking loans with your EPF, will this bring the economy down? Keep watching to find out. As usual, now what we say is financial advice. Please speak to a pro if you need that sort of advice. We are non-professionals, just for educational purposes only. Now guys, if you're really interested in building a six to seven figure portfolio, we've got the perfect solution for you. Head over in the comment section or the description to sign up for our free masterclass where you can get all these proven steps to achieve it. So that's uh, exactly my reaction that you see um, Anwar with that <laughs> face when I heard that the government has decided to allow emergency loans through EPF using EPF as collateral for those who don't know what collateral means is the same thing that you know the amount of money you put up for your car the 10% down payment things like that that's so so called the collateral as well and uh yes yeah, so John walk us through why this is happening well why this is happening I think it's quite easy to understand right yeah yeah right yeah there's no money exactly uh, um, but yeah how, how, how is this working yeah yeah okay so I'm just gonna go a little bit on the context about the uh EPF collateral so uh for you guys don't know you can actually take your account to EPF account to as collateral for personal loans uh, from banks. Uh, now, the government actually prefer you to take loans from this uh, Islamic financing loan method because the interest, they say that the interest rate is lower than the market loan rate. Like Reba, something yeah, like that, yeah, exactly. So, uh, but then it doesn't stop you from actually getting loans from the conventional banks. Uh, but this is just the preferred method lah, because of the low interest rate. If you want to go for conventional also, it's fine. Okay, so uh, just want to go through who can actually apply for this. So they actually break it down into a few phases. So the phase one is, uh, which is on the 7th of April, is already passed already. I believe it's like two days ago. Uh, it is open for one year for people who is age uh, 40 to uh, around like 55. Lah. Okay. Yeah, so that is the age group that you can actually start to apply for this emergency loan. Uh uh, yeah, so basically that's about it. And then there's phase two, but they haven't really tell you when is the date, which is uh, below 40 right, years old. Right. And then the condition that you need to uh, abide to is that you have to have at least uh, 3,000 ringgit in your account to, to apply for this emergency loan. So, and also you need to be an EPF contributor lah, yeah, to in, in order to get this uh, special uh, thing. All right, so this is the finance uh, facility. Uh, the max limit that you can actually borrow the loan is up to about like 50,000. It depends on how much is your balance. Uh. So if let's say your balance is have 3,000, the max, I think you can only withdraw out is only like 3,000 uh, as a loan, as collateral. And then the, they set a repayment tenor for you up to 10 years. So you can take your time, 10 years to slowly pay out this personal loan. And then the interest rate is going to be roughly around like 4 to 5%. Uh, which is around like, your housing loan. Uh, it's uh, essentially a housing loan. Uh, it's actually much more better than personal loan, kinda. But you're using EPF. <laughs> and I assume here the limit is one to one. So you can only borrow what is in your, your account. account. Yes, You can't exactly. borrow more than that, right? Yes, I exactly, exactly. I see. Okay, yeah. okay. So uh, yeah, I think that's about it for this finance uh, facility. Now, we want to like compare between countries, right? Because we want to see whether countries do practice this emergency loan. Because this is a pretty yeah. new thing when I heard about it. I oh, mean- uh, and, and just before that, right? I yeah. just want to show the math. So I would assume that at four to 5% interest rates, that will be matching the the EPF payment, the dividends. Uh, yes, exactly. Right? Yeah. So they are, the reason why they do doing do this is because uh, when they use the EPF money that's inside EPF as collateral, right? Yes. It won't uh, EPF won't straight away deduct that amount. So let's say you want to borrow ten thousand. Yes. Uh that ten thousand won't be immediately be deducted, but EPF will like let it run for like 10 years to in order to get some interest, the four to five percent. Yes. So uh let's say So you will deplete slowly, lah, basically. Yeah, exactly. So let's say you're paying on time, right? You are not really paying the four to five percent interest yes. because okay. EPF already got that four four to five percent. But if assuming you cannot pay that ten thousand ringgit, right? I mean, then you have to top it up, la, like So basically, 10K. you pay, you buy now, pay later, la, Yeah, right? exactly. You get it now, the money now, but you pay across ten years. Yes. So the big loser here, it seems to me, they are the banks. Uh, uh yes, that's because why because the Islamic bank is among the interest rate is very low one. Right, right. Yeah, that's the reason why they perform. But this four to five percent, I believe, is for Islamic bank. 
I'm not sure whether this is for conventional. So let's, yeah, but they'll still be the losers because at four or five- No, uh, conventional, I'm not sure whether it's going to be four to 5%. It might be oh, higher. Right. right, right. So even if it's Islamic Bank, there's still going to be some of, well, okay, sorry. Um, they are not the biggest loser. They're the second biggest loser, which is uh, they they should be trying charging more, more yes. because in the normal conditions, that's what they would do. Mm. Uh, but the biggest loser would be uh, the right, yeah, because they would forfeit their dividend, EPF dividend. Yes, exactly. So that's a bit more positive, actually. I, I, it sounds a bit more positive because I feel like the person who takes out the money needs to be the one that uh, gets the benefits and of course, Best the risk as well. So let me go on. Yes, exactly. So uh, yeah, now you know a little bit about the nitty gritty on that yes. side. Uh, now you want to compare between other countries like US. Uh, well, the US they have this thing called the IRA, uh, with something like your EPF like that lah. And for US, right, they the there's a strict rule. Basically, they say that you cannot use your retirement fund as collateral for any loan. And there's actually an alternative way. If you let's say you want you have to like die, die, you have to take out money from your uh, retirement fund. So there's this thing called the rollover provision and it only allows you to withdraw and use it for two months only. So for EPF, right, they let you use it uh, ten guess, for 10 years. Yeah, this side is like two months and uh, what the USD was correct is because uh, they have a, put a very strict penalty to it. So if let's say you don't return it within two months, right, they'll charge you like a 10% yes. uh, earlier withdrawal penalty plus some income tax uh, if let's say you use it, uh, use the money. However, uh, they also have like certain uh, condition. Uh, so yes. this one is exceptional for those that are to totally uh, permanently disabled or have like a higher educational expenses. So mm. I think what the US did for this one is correct because it is to discourage people to actually withdraw money from their retirement fund. Yes. Whereas for EPF is more like they have to please the the people, so yeah. they have to allow like some funds. Uh, and then also with the terms that is actually more favorable towards the, um, I would say the right, yeah, a little bit for the short amount of time. Yeah. So that's about it for the US. And if you look at other countries practices, uh, it also has been very uh, strict also. So you can see that uh, one of the ways, if let's say they want to redraw money is that they impose an interest rate that is uh, higher than the banks. So for in our case, right, it's like, is equal to the bank's rate or maybe even less than that. Yeah, the reason is also but because- But a, a personal loan wouldn't be just four, 5% if a uh, bank were to loan you. If it's a conventional bank, then maybe it will be higher. La. Or much higher. Yeah, yeah. if it's an Islamic one, they, they say it's around four to 5%. Yeah, la. but I think regardless of conventional or Islamic, math is still math. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, if you want to make right. money, yeah, you have to charge higher. La. But then I think the government is trying to push it to lower the interest rate so that it doesn't really burden the right yard. Well, I think the backers behind these Islamic banks will be the one having to bankroll all of this stuff. Yes, right? exactly. And also uh, there's this uh, condition, if let's say they default any payment, right? Uh, they will ban the people from using this kind of facility or uh, this emergency loan because uh, yeah, I mean, that's quite that's obvious. Good, yeah. Reason. yeah. yeah. But guys, before we move on, if you're someone looking to level up their stock investing skills and you need a lot more guidance, we do have a one-on-one -on -one program called the Mentorship Program. If you're interested, you can apply it in the comment section or the description. Okay, so uh, this is a very interesting chart because not every single country practices this. Uh, so if you notice only Switzerland, so far they have been doing that. Uh, and this data is actually in 2015. Uh, and right now we have Malaysia that is providing this pension collateral. Yes. I believe no other country at the moment does have this. as many ticks as us. Yeah, 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 exactly. So yeah, we are living in a country that, I mean, we are quite spoiled la, in a way. But also spoiled, I think, I'm not sure it's, I think it's because maybe the Raya really needs the money. I, I, I kind of yeah. like play like the devil's, is it devil's advocate or what? But then I just try opposite to think, view, that, yeah, yeah, opposite view, like try to think that maybe they really need the money. La. So yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, that's about it for the redrawal mode. And this is basically just a, it's going to be a very short video because uh, it is what it is only. Uh, the pension collateral is not really widely practiced all around the world. Uh, so we only have like Switzerland and then right now Malaysia is doing this because of uh, the certain requests from the right yard. And also uh, it is somewhat good for short-term relief 
but then for the long term wise it will be bad because your retirement fund is basically like reducing lah. I mean if you don't have much retirement fund how are you gonna retire right you still have to work to get money and then the last point is basically uh I believe that the government needs to have impose a very strict timeline to use this facility it shouldn't be practice for indefinite time yeah like maybe only this year yeah starting wrong years then the next few years they stop uh introducing this facility uh this is to like you know discourage people from actually taking out money from their retirement fund but any uh thoughts about this so the first thing is i think the first thing that the government did right to balance this is the fact that it's only account two yes so usually account two is used for things like you know, you know renovate your house right you use that it's like a less strict version of account one mm. so at least it's the damage is limited to that i uh, say damage because the fact of the matter is epf really is one of the backbones of the economy right uh when you contribute money into epf you are also contributing to the stability of the economy right EPF will be able to use these monies to A, invest in the economy, B, to invest overseas to diversify from the Malaysian economy so that we become uh, stronger. So that is uh, something that, you know, uh, EPF is uh, uh, very good at. And the fact that it's account to limits the damage. The second thing I want to add is the good thing that they did was this 10-year thing. Mm -hmm. The reason is because now it gives the Malaysian economy a chance to outgrow this outflow of EPF. Mm, yep. Okay. Uh, yeah, so they will outgrow this EPF. And if, especially with what uh, Prime Minister Anwar is trying to do with the trade situation, foreign direct investment, blah, blah, blah spur economy, things like that, uh, even lower taxes for middle income people, um, there is a chance. Honestly, there is a chance that the economy can, economy and EPF will outgrow the gushing out of reserves. Yes. Part of the reason is also, number three, now that money goes into these people who take money out, what are they going to do with the money? Yes, exactly. Spend it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just going to roll back the economy. It's going to benefit the companies that EPF holds, some of the real estate that EPF holds. Mm. And so, yeah. Now, number four is, I think that, the people who withdraw the money, I hope that it's an extreme situation. Yes. So this is where it is beyond law. This is has to do with ethics and this has to do with being reasonable. I would plead people who are eligible to withdraw but don't need the money not to withdraw. Hmm. If you are withdrawing it, so that you can go on holiday, yeah. then I think that's what you shouldn't be doing. It's the same thing as a rich person's daughter applying for a scholarship. It is exactly the same thing. And I believe the only people who should be exercising this thing are people who really need the money. Yeah. Perhaps they are in, in a medical emergency. Maybe they have to try and make rent for the past, the next six months food for their children yeah no problem they have to be like a specific uh filtration uh process la. yeah be uh, not, not not for everyone because la. remember the majority of epf assets are owned by people who do not need this yeah because they're rich yeah they yep. have a lot in EPF. i believe that's like 70 or 80 percent right of right now the epf fund is held by the t20s the exactly yeah. so if any t20s okay to all t20s out there if any of you all withdrawing funds and taking advantage of this account too i sincerely hope you reconsider because you will uh, hurt the economy and you will hurt epf and you may impair epf's ability to pay dividends and if you do that and impairs the dividends of the epf you can pay back the loans with your own personal money you know no problem uh, but you will impact all the other people who actually rely on the epf dividend yep Exactly. So yeah, I think that's about it. And also make sure you pay your payback on time if you actually yeah don't don't pity pity and this yeah, yeah. Okay. don't don't make it as a, like a, I don't know like a pity pity and loan yeah. and then you don't pay yeah, the loan. Fifty ringgit a month. Yeah, very yeah, good. Yeah, exactly. 
All right, so uh, that's it for today's video. Uh, and before you guys go, this is the March 2023's uh, performance. So far, it has been doing pretty well. If you look at the bottom, the Telegram portfolio has also been performing quite decently. And those are the portfolio that we actually share to our Telegram members uh, quite immediately because these are all short-term catalysts that is not in Fire Pro. Fire Pro one is more of a long-term catalyst unless the fundamentals change. So uh, yeah, if you want to know about what stocks we actually bought and what stocks we initiated, you can find it out in Fire Pro. And for more information, uh, we have a free link for you to access our free sample on Fire Pro and SIB. So if you want to check it out, the links will be in the description and comments down below. MJ, any last words? All good, guys. Um, spend your EPF money wisely if you're going to exercise this option. And uh, yeah, all the best. See you in the next video.